after day. Do you wish you had an easy way to build variety into your Instagram content instead of posting the same old, same old content? Hey, would you love to batch more of your content that your followers love while saving some free time yourself? Well, if so, then today's show is for you. Hello, everybody. I am Jeff C. from Manly Pinterest Tips, and I'm here with my co-host, Rebecca Radice, and we are so happy to have you guys on um, as we're going along today. With, this show is all about you, so we would love for you guys to um, ask any questions you have, and we will try to bring them up on the screen and get to those today. Um, and also, we are still doing the tailwind tip. So if you would love to win one of these awesome selfie lights, look, oh, um, they are so cool. They make you look amazing. Uh, even me, I look amazing with this. Um, you, All you need to do is put in hashtag tailwind tip as we say some sort of nugget that you found interesting or something that you want to remember. Uh, add that hashtag tailwind tip and you will be entered for a drawing to win one of these selfie lights they're awesome you need to do it it's very very cool so uh, if you have a uh, a tip that you have used using instagram and tailwind together we would love to know that as well so you get double extra points if you do that so if you have a tailwind tip that we are not even saying that you just think is amazing we'd love for you guys to drop that in there hashtag tailwind tip and um we also have we are continuing to offer this awesome uh, free download. It's uh, how to get to 10K followers, and it's you can download it for free. Just go to bit.ly dot, I mean, bit.ly forward slash 10K dash FB. That's bit.ly 10K dot FB dash FB. So, Rebecca, how are you doing today? I can barely get my words out, but I'm. we're going to make it through this show. <laughs> It's almost Friday, right? I know. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Almost Friday. Yeah. I I am doing great and very excited to be back today talking about Instagram and a slice of what you'll find within that 10K uh, guide that uh, Kristen, who is not here with us today because oh, she's getting married. What a slacker, though. Come um, on. I mean. I know, right? Geez. Oh, wedding. Come on, not to be here. <laughs> right. But she she wrote this whole 10K guide. And part of what we're going to talk about here today is within that guide, uh, which is how to source ideas and inspiration for your Instagram posts. And I just get a sneaking suspicion, Jeff, that that is not just my struggle. I think we all deal with that struggle of, what do I post? What kind of content? What kind of pictures? Where do I go find inspiration for these posts? So we're gonna we're gonna answer a whole lot of that today, and hopefully um, bring it all together like Kristen would so beautifully do if she were here with us. I know she did. She did a great. She did a lot of the heavy lifting. We got to give her a little bit of credit for that because she did a lot with this uh, this free uh, thing that we're offering. Um, the, the how to get to 10k followers and um, I just want to do a shout out really quick to uh, some people who are joining us I want to say hello to Elizabeth she is here joining us we've got um, Tracy here with us and as well as uh, Jessica thanks so much everybody for joining us you know ask your questions as we're getting along going along today and don't forget the to be internet to win this selfie life light selfie light you have to put hashtag tailwind tip and give us any nuggets. And Rebecca's going to drop a ton of them today. So anything that you went, oh, wow, that's incredible. Um, uh, put that as a tailwind tip and get uh, tr get entered to win this uh, really, really cool. T I'm holding it upside down. Tailwind selfie light. Look at that. See? Oh, look how cool that is. Yes. Are you familiar with the selfie light and how yes. it works? I, okay. I mean, I usually right, use it to... It. Yeah, I use it actually. I don't use it on myself because I don't take a lot of pictures of myself, but I do use it when I'm like shooting. I do a lot of stuff for products for some clients and things like that. And it works really good to take like just with your camera, some really cool um, product shots. So, this oh, is, and, absolutely. And, and actually, Elisa last week on the show couldn't, she didn't have time to get her nice light set up. So she like attached it to her monitor and was using that in the entire show was, was her selfie light. So they work really That's well. That's awesome. There you go. Yeah. On the go or in your office, whatever. Yes, yeah. It's really good. Well, let's get started on today on never running out of Instagram post ideas again. So, you know, I know, you know, we, it feels like you have to put out stuff on, on Instagram all the time and it's a struggle. Um, 
But you have got some tips for us on what we can do to kind of like streamline this process that you've come up with. Yeah, and as I said, it's a, a whole concept that you'll find within that 10K guide. Uh, and basically what it does is it helps you uh, identify what your content is, what your categories are. And I know we've talked about this uh, in, in prior lives where we're helping you really figure out not only who's your audience, but how do you figure out what kind of content your audience wants. And so this value ladder is what it's called, V-A-L-U-E, and we're gonna kind of break down why this value framework that we've built out really makes it so incredibly simple for you to never have to worry, what do I post on Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday? Or do I even know if this is going to resonate with my audience? So the goal within this is to kind of take away a lot of that worry or that stress or just that questioning that goes on within our heads uh, every single time we get ready to post something. So yeah, I know you laugh because I think we all feel that that struggle and that strain, whether you're planning ahead, you know, weeks in advance or a month in advance, this is going to help you do all of that uh, so that it really becomes a plug and play for you where where you know exactly what those categories are, you know exactly how those categories resonate with your audience, so you know how they're performing over there on Instagram. And then it makes it much easier if you're a batcher where you do want to create maybe weeks of content in advance to do exactly that. So as you start to think about these buckets, um, it, think about what kind of content do you already have? What have you created? So uh, if you are a blogger or maybe you're a podcaster or you're creating content for YouTube, I want you to think about what have you already created that we can repurpose over on Instagram. So this isn't necessarily about starting from scratch. It's not about creating a whole bunch of new work for you. It's about thinking, uh, what do I already have? What have I created over the many, many years that I've been creating content possibly for different channels? Um, and how can we pull that all together and start to use it over on Instagram? So Jeff, let's talk about what exactly value stands for when uh, we're thinking about that B, that A, that L, U, and E. Yes. So we're going to bring I, up this really cool graphic yeah. that um, uh, when it, you, can, you can walk us through because <laughs> I was such a goofball. I was like, oh, it spells something. That is very, very cool. So <laughs> just realize That's that. That's right. Yeah. See? Yeah. All right. So as we talk about that, that value framework, what you're going to think about is what type of content could you share within the V. So the V is valuable. This is valuable content in the eyes of your audience. So it's anything that's maybe helpful, educational, um, something that you can teach or uh, that they can learn. Then you've got aspirational content. Don't worry. Uh, I'm going to go through these kind of quickly here, but we're going to break down every single one for you. And it's all within that book too. So uh, while we're going to talk through this kind of quickly here today, we only have an hour we do give you really great examples like you hear, uh, you see Jen's trends. So Jen mm -hmm. Herman, we're all a big fan of hers over here at Tailwind. Um, she's a great example of valuable content. So you see here, she had a post, stop deleting your hashtags. And if you know Jen, she is fabulous at keeping up with what's going on with Instagram um, and then really bringing it to you in a way that is educational, that you learn, oh, wait a second, why shouldn't I be deleting my hashtags? So this is kind of how we're going to go through this. We're going to show you what each of these types of content mean and then hopefully give you some ideas of how to plug that content in to that framework. Because the idea behind this is that it's going to give you five days worth of content. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you're going to be able to post something that's valuable, something that's aspirational, 
So aspirational is uh, idealized, maybe tangible, attainable vision for your audience, or is goal oriented. So think about this in terms of maybe you've learned something along the way within your business and you're sharing it with your audience. Then that third day, maybe Wednesday's content would be life cycle content. And if you're scratching your head wondering what that is, well, there's lots of different ways to understand life cycle and how it impacts the content you're creating. So it could be anything that helps you build awareness around maybe your brand, your product, uh, what you're creating, maybe a service. Maybe it's content that helps you nurture relationships. And again, we're gonna share some examples within this, but our good friend Peg Fitzpatrick is a great example mm. of life cycle content where, uh, I don't know, Jeff, if there's anybody better at creating right. relationships. Um, and she does it on Instagram every single day. Um, and it's also content that encourages action. So if you look at Peg, she's asking questions, she's digging deep, she's asking you to get interactive. So that's kind of what life cycle looks like. Um, unique would be unique to your business. So it's proprietary content, it's content that you're not necessarily sharing from somebody else, um, but it's it's stuff that you've created. It's something that directly relates to your brand um, and it's very business focused. So what else this value framework is helping you do is spread out these different types of uh, content as well so that you're not sharing the same thing over and over and over again. Cause I don't know about you guys, but I get stuck in that rut too, where I can share the the same type of content right. over and over and over. Um, and then you've got the E in the, the end of uh, value, which is whoop, educational, um, which is okay. We can, we can jump or evergreen rather yeah, evergreen yeah. content. Um, that is that content that you could have created three years ago, but is still super, super timely um, and really useful to your audience, uh, no matter when they're receiving that message. So let's go ahead, let's jump into each one of these yeah. and we're gonna kind of give you some ideas, right Jeff, of what this looks like and some examples. Right, I don't wanna bring up some comments. Um, one, because um, there was some uh, great, I wanna, uh, some great Tailwind tips that people have been sharing. Like, of course, she win <laughs> Lisa wins for the day where she goes, uh, uh, the tailwind tip should be use tailwind, which is awesome. That's a great one as well. Um, and a lot of people were talking about um, recreating. This is from uh, Suzanne. She goes, re recreate your existing content on Instagram. Um, Aaron says, I love the idea of repurposing your content. And um, other and uh, Regina also says, Repurse, repurposing existing content from other channels. So um, we have a lot of, make sure you guys keep dropping in those Tailwind tips. Those, you know, get entered in that drawing for the, um, for the uh, selfie light. So, um, and Abby has a great point. She goes, that acronym is super helpful. So if you guys are just joining us, uh, the acronym is actually, uh, called value it says stands for value and that's valuable aspirational lifestyle unique and evergreen and we're going to jump right into those and even give you some examples but Rebecca I just wanted to uh pull those up because people are really finding this helpful so thanks guys for dropping that uh down below well, and I, I love that the, the the repurposing is resonating because I am a, at my core right. a repurposer. You know, it's all about how much mileage you can get out of that content. And I think too often we think we have to reinvent over and over and over and over again. When in reality, our message is is really the same, right? No matter where we're presenting it, um, we're just serving it up in a little bit different different way to say that Instagram audience as opposed to our Facebook audience or maybe our Twitter audience or our blog audience or our YouTube audience. So you do have to put on that Instagram hat right. and think about what exactly they're looking for from you, but pulling from your past content that say, you know, has already performed well, you know, it's a core part of your brand, your message, your vision, your values. Um, there's, there's just no reason not to repurpose what you've already got. Right. And I think in this first example we're going to show, and you're talking about um, uh, the value part of it. And 
using Instagram to educate or teach your followers, I think is really good. So I'm going to go ahead and dry, uh, pull up this first comment. And I mean, this first example, and you can kind of walk us through this, uh, Rebecca. So I thought this was a great example of, you know, education. Yeah, and, and a perfect example is exactly this. So it, the post is, why can't I do a full push-up? Um, hello, I totally <laughs> relate to that. I don't know about anybody else. Right. <laughs> That's not happening in my lifetime. Um, but you can see here that what they're doing is uh, they're tying a um, their their visual here. Why can't I do a full push up with an explanation? So they go into a full explanation of, and they also use a carousel in this example uh, to carousel post to help them educate. Uh, and this is valuable content because it's educational. It answers a common question that you can imagine if you have or one person has a whole lot of people have and so as you start to think about what would be valuable to your audience think about those top questions so frequently asked questions we're going to have uh, jaron on from our customer support team here at tailwind and it could be something like that for you if you've got uh, a support staff that is getting those frequently asked questions ask them you know what are people uh, asking us over and over and over again mm -hmm. and how could you transition that into a post over on Instagram. It could be that you are a crafter and you're creating things on a daily basis. So it could be a DIY. You could create a video of you actually putting that beautiful work of art together. So right. it's just really thinking about your business, what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think so often we get caught up in the minutia of our business and we think, ah, pfft, that's boring. Nobody else would appreciate that or even like to see that. And it, in reality, um, people love to go behind the scenes. They love to see what it took for us to get, you know, from A to Z. Mm -hmm. um, so what is valuable to your audience might not initially feel valuable to you because you've been doing it day in and day out for so long. Um, so get into those comments or those questions. Uh, within your social channels, write an email and ask, you know, what is it that keeps you up at night? What is frustrating? What can't you seem to overcome within your life or your business? And then just start answering those questions in your posts. Um, I find that that makes it a whole lot easier than us trying to sit there and somehow magically figure out, you know, what is important to our audience when in reality, more than likely they're out there. Um, and I know we've talked about this before, Jeff, they're more than likely raising their hands saying, right. hey, here's what yeah. I wanna know. And we just have to listen. Yeah, and I wanna go back to this real quick because it's, you know, the the question on it. And, and most of the time we talk about on Instagram, we want, you know, the positive and inspirational stuff. And when you first look at this, it's kind of negative. It's like, why can't I do a full push up? And that seems really negative. But what that actually is, is that's, that's you know, ha hitting somebody's pain point. Like they can relate right. to that post, you know, and because like I look at it and I go, you know, the last exercise I did was chasing the coupon for a Big Mac across the parking lot on a windy day. <laughs> so, I mean, that hits a pain point. It's like, oh, I, okay, well, maybe I should look at this. And so sometimes if you really know your audience on Instagram, those type of posts that, you know, you know, if somebody else would read it, it's like, that sounds like, why can't, you know, negative, but it's really hitting a pain point, And that might be something that really resonates with your audience. Yeah, that's such a, that's such a great point too, is uh, I know we can tend to shy away from the negative. Um, but yeah, when you can kind of touch people right where they're at and say, hey, I see you, I hear you, I know you're struggling with the same thing, that's so relatable. Mm -hmm. And it's just one of those things. In fact, we were joking on the team this morning. We, uh, we just started a, oh, 
by the way, uh, just another fun little nugget with this 10K guide. Uh, we just kicked off this week a brand new support group. It's a Facebook group that you can become a part of when you download that guide. So there you go. There's your handy little uh, bit.ly forward slash 10K dash FB. So when you download that guide, you can join um, our Facebook group. And we were talking this morning about some different posts that we're going to put together. And and one of the gals had just created a video and she shared it and she said, um, does this feel uh, too relaxed and too in the moment? And I said, I, I don't believe you can ever be too relaxed or too in the moment when you're using uh, video to connect with your audience because they love that. They love to see the real you, what you know is unfiltered and not edited and not all slickly produced mm -hmm. like we see so many videos. And she, her joke was, yeah, I actually brushed my hair today. And I said, but there you go. That's relatable. And that's the kind of thing I think we need to think about more with our Instagram content is how can we share more of those moments, those moments that do either tap into the pain maybe the pain is I don't want to brush my hair every single day um, <laughs> <laughs> or the pain I can't do a pull up or a push up or any of those. Right. Um, and, and how do I expose that and kind of expose myself too, right? Cause that's mm -hmm. the scary part of telling our own story within that of maybe it goes back to, there was a day when I couldn't do a single pull up and then I figured out how, and, now I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. And that I think is the beauty in our experiences and how we can relay them on Instagram. Right, and I wanna bring up this comment um, that uh, Chris says, they love to see the real you, and that's his tailwind tip. He says, that is so good. Um, and uh, Bree says, um, actually valuable, ask the tough questions and answer and then answer it. And so a lot of people are talking about, Suzanne is saying, you know, be relatable. This is, these are all great things. Um, but we do have a question from Rick that I wanted to throw up there for you, um, Rebecca. He goes, what do you think works best? A curated feed or a more snapshot of life and keep the daily throwaway nebulous of the scenes on Instagram stories? What are your thoughts about that? Because we're kind of breaking down some of these different types of posts. What, what would you tell Rick? Yeah, and that's, you know, that's a great question. And it's really going to depend on your audience. And I think we've talked about this in previous Facebook Lives in that uh, there's a whole movement away from that pretty curated feed and into a feed that really captures those moments. So for you, it's going to depend on what type of industry, um, what type of content you're sharing, um, and, and how much you're wanting people to relate with you on a very personal level, and whether or not you feel like that slick curated feed is really in line with your brand or with your style. I think you can succeed going either direction where you've got a curated feed and you're using stories for more uh, in the moment, behind the scenes, come along with me, you know, within my day, uh, and, but vice versa. You can also succeed with a very in the moment or at least that feel uh, over on your feed and then using your stories to do some of that, but also supporting, maybe promoting some of your other content that you've got going on. So that's the cool part too, I think, is that there is no one size fits all answer to Instagram. It's really what works best for you, for your brand, for your personality, for uh, your comfort level, for the type of content that you share, for your message, your voice, and then what works best for your audience. And you're gonna figure that out too. So I would say, don't be afraid to play around. Don't be afraid to mix and match. Don't be afraid to just really test, 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 um, and see what's working. There's uh, just a plug tailwind real quick here. There are great ways that you can see exactly what type of content, um, that analysis, you know, of what kind of content is really performing best so that you don't continue to post content that you go, oh, gosh, that's just not working. Um, but you, you can start to just recreate those pieces of content that work extremely well. Yeah, and I want to bring up this comment from uh, uh, L LK. She says, um, uh, yeah. Oh, good. Because I suck at pretty, cur uh, pretty curated food. <laughs> I feel you because I feel the I same way. It. I use mine for experimentation yeah. a lot. And, uh, 
But that's but but people follow me because they want to see the real the real me. Hopefully, or maybe that's a little scary. Maybe they don't. Maybe I should stop. But um, they want to they see the beard. They, they want to see, see the real you. The, the real. But so yeah, I know we we can get um, we can kind of see what other people are doing, and some of the big influencers were like, "Oh my gosh, that's." I don't have time to make a feed like that, but like Re- uh, Rebecca was saying, yeah. is ta- you know showing the real you and and to be honest, if you I think the trends of Instagram is going that way that I see the the the, the becoming more popular are the people who are just showing snapshots and the stories. That's you know it's the rawness of that. So I think we may be kind of tending to trend a little bit away from the super pretty feeds, but we'll see. Yeah, yeah, you know. Uh, 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 it's exciting to me because I am no photographer. Photographer. Oh, <laughs> uh, I, I, I consider myself more a storyteller and writer, and so it can be it, it can be a struggle. So I totally feel you on that. That uh, you know, it's nice if we can trend away, but again, I think we can make it whatever we want to make it. Um, I think we can That's make it, it really fit. Yeah, fit, fit our brand and not try to shove our brand into something that just doesn't feel right. Because that's the other part of it, too, where I see so many people mimicking what others are doing because, yeah, it works really well for them. It's beautiful for their brand. And then we wonder why it's not working for us. So mm-hmm. I, there is that aspect of it of not, you know, to get all flowery and woo woo, but right. be true, be true to you. And, and that's then it feels more natural and organic too. And not like such a struggle. Yeah. Be unique, just like everybody else. So let's join in right. on, let, let's go to the second uh, <laughs> part of our acronym, the A, and we're going to be do- talking about uh, aspirational posts. So what, what is, what does that mean? What's an aspirational post, Rebecca? Well, and we've probably all seen these because there was a big trend for a while on Instagram to really lean towards aspirational, which is um, really inspiring people. So sharing your story, talking about maybe what you struggled with within your business or a frustration. Um, so it's something attainable. It's it's really bringing people into a vision and bringing them into the narrative as well. So helping them understand that, hey, I've been there, I've done that, I've walked, you know, in the same kind of steps that you're taking right now. And I understand what you're trying to get to or where you'd like to be. So for example, part of that for us at Tailwind is understanding that there is a real benefit to getting 10,000 followers on Instagram. It's it's not just a woohoo, look at me, uh, but there are terrific business benefits when you reach that 10,000 mark. And so that could be considered aspirational where we are helping you uh, realize that dream, that dream of how do I get to 10,000 followers. So just think about um, whether it's learning a new skill. So for me, you know, I, uh, I played the piano for probably eight years of my life and then gave it up and just picked it up again. And I was just joking with my husband the other day, I need to take some video of just how terrible I am. I thought it would be like writing a <laughs> bike job which i'm good at (laughs) and it is absolutely not like that where i i feel like what happened to all of those years of you know music theory and everything else and it's just like out the window yeah so think about it in terms of that of what have you learned along the way what can you share and how can you inspire your audience to get to where you are at this point without feeling the frustration or maybe having to figure it out all on their own Mm-hmm. And we have a great example of that that I want to pull up for uh, for this aspirational type. And it, and you and you may not think of the at the right at the beginning, but this is a great example of this is from Athletic Engineering Online, and it says on for you guys listening on the podcast. Uh, by the way, we have a podcast that you can go and subscribe and leave a comment and review. We'd love it. Um, but this is a great example of content from Athletic Engineering Online that can be seen as aspirational, especially if you're you know running is in your exercise plan. Uh, it's really hard to start out, and you know a lot of people like uh, I fall forward fast, 
but a lot of people wish they could be a lot better at it. And so this is very aspirational for those people who may be getting started to run. You know, here's a here's a how-to series on how to improve it. You're started, and this is inspiring you to make it better. So I think it's very, very – this is a great example on that. What are your thoughts, Rebecca? Yeah, I totally agree. And I think this goes back to that first point we were talking about, which is um, it can almost seem redundant maybe to you because you've talked about it so much in your business or you've done it so much in your business. Uh, but just think about how quickly that feed is moving, how quickly our audience is scrolling through content, how much they're seeing. This is new. This is new to a whole lot of people. So never put down the fact that maybe you've talked about it elsewhere. Maybe you've talked about it before. Maybe it feels like, oh my gosh, I've done this a million times within my business. There is somebody and that is that exact right audience that you're going to touch with this content. And so I love this example of a very aspirational. How, how can, it's also very tactical, right? Mm -hmm. So how can I improve my running right now? So this could be a checklist that you could share. This could be a um, you know, day one, this is what I did to improve my running. Day two, I did, you know, this little tweak or day three, I did this. So think about what you went through and what those steps were that you took to learn or to grow or to really wrap your head around something. And then how can you translate that into something super valuable for your audience that is meeting them uh, right where they're at in that moment. And I, I, I want to go back to what I just said so everybody hears it because I think it's super, super important. But what you are creating is for a very specific audience. So if you feel as if you're repeating yourself, that is okay because it's going to resonate with the exact right people that are in that moment that could be that switching moment where they're thinking about making a move from your competitor over to somebody new because they're feeling the pain and that you become the tipping point or uh, they've never even heard of you and they're finding something that just boom captures their attention so uh, you know again if if you feel like you've done it over and over it's okay because you're going to grab and, a whole new audience and attention and i think that's imp important too because if you're doing it right, you're constantly getting new followers anyway, and they may not know that message that you have said before. And so, you, I mean, you don't want to be repeating to be annoying, but being consistent in your message and kind of what you had just yes, said, Rebecca, exactly. because we forget that we have new people who are following us. And even the people who are following us with the algorithms and the way they work, they may have not seen that message before. And so um, it's it's kind of hit or miss. And we, we tend to think, oh, everybody's seen that. Well, Everybody didn't see your post. So, um, you know, putting it out right. there again is, is a great point. I, I want to, so let's, I want to go back to this, um, what we, this example we've just talked about. And Sally Howe how asked a great question. And I want to know how, like, using this as an example to do this, Rebecca, would be um, she asks, let me pull it up here. She says, um, what is the best way you'd recommend to find appropriate hashtags for your audience? Also, what size hashtag should we be posting uh, to in to be in with a chance of being seen? Some of the big hashtags are so enormous that there is no chance of being seen. So using the example we were just saying you talking about and it's talking about improving your running. What would what advice would you give Sally uh, about this? How, what what would we use for cuz running is a huge hashtag. If you want hashtag running, that's right. enormous. So what tools and yep. tips would you use for Sally in, in this example? Yeah, and that's such a great question, Sally. So first of all, I would start, uh, I look at hashtags the same way I do as keywords. Uh, so if you're thinking about keyword research and what you want to be known for. So what are those hashtags that are not only going to support your company, but support that particular post? So as you're thinking about, let's say, this value framework, and we're talking about, say, aspiration what kind of content would fall into that bucket for you? So if it's running and you're going to talk about running, 
a lot because there's probably a bazillion different you know pieces within running that are aspirational that you could talk about you're going to want to go and do some research into what are those top hashtags that to your point aren't so big that you're going to get lost in a sea of noise but are going to be specific enough to your company and your topic and are going to give you a good chance to get found so first of all you can go over to instagram and you can just do what I would call your seed research. So your seed is going to be a really high level, broad keyword or hashtag, which could just be running. Um, if shoes were involved, it could be running shoes. And like, you know, what's going to happen is uh, Instagram's going to serve up a whole lot of suggested hashtags. It's going to say, well, people basically that search for running also used these hashtags. And so you can start to uh, go through and, and filter through based off of how many people have actually posted, how much content is within that hashtag. And so as you see, those hashtags that are say 2 million or above, it's going to be pretty hard for you, for you to surface your content up at the top um, within those nine posts that nine grid uh, of those top uh, posts within that hashtag. So what you're looking for is either lower scale, so any hashtags that are more niche, so are gonna be super, super specific to exactly what that topic is, exactly what your business is. So let's just give an example of what that might look like. So I am in the Los Angeles area, that's really hyper specific, right? It's for people that are in Los Angeles, but I could get even more specific in my exact city, in my exact community. Um, and then maybe I could say running. So that could look like Los Angeles running, Los Angeles running shoes. Um, so think of it as just getting a, a, a lot more specific in terms of your company, your business, your topic, uh, could be your location if you want to be location based. And those are going to be on the lower end. So you're thinking about the higher end It's going to be really, really hard. So 2 million plus people are posting into that hashtag going to be hard for you to get anybody to see your content. Whereas niche on the other end could be only 500 posts could be below 10,000 posts. And a lot of people might disregard those, but depending on your business, those could be really, really valuable to your company to get seen and found by those exact right people that we were just talking about. Now, what I find your sweet spot is, is somewhere between 500,000 and 1 million. And that is where you're gonna find those people and the opportunities to reach a lot broader market, a lot bigger market, and people that are really, really in need of your product, your service, your business, or your brand. So you can do all of this through a whole lot of hashtag research within Instagram, or of course you can do this right within Tailwind. Mm -hmm. And we actually color code everything I just talked about. So we color code, are these niche specific? Are these good? Are these best? Or are these gonna be really, really hard for you to compete within those high level ones I was talking about? So we take a lot of that guesswork out of it. And then uh, just to finally answer your last question, you can use 30 hashtags I would highly suggest using every single one of those 30 hashtags uh, and creating, you can say, uh, create saved hashtag lists right within Tailwind. So you don't have to copy and paste every single time. You can just click your saved hashtag list and drop that right down into your post. And I would say with this value ac acronym that we are um, talking about, you can actually go ahead and save those hashtag lists based on those different types of posts that we're getting, that we're talking about. If you wanna do different types of posts to kind of mix it up a little bit, the value and, and some of the other ones we're talking about, you, well, you can have saved hashtag lists that make it really easy when you are pu uh, pushing mm -hmm. out those types of posts, so. 
That's brilliant. Yeah, yeah I hadn't yeah. even thought about that, but that is so smart because, yeah, as you're thinking about what type of content would fall under, say, valuable content, you're probably going to have maybe four or five different topics within each of these buckets. So, yeah, potentially you could do your uh, your hashtag research and then, like you said, just create a value list, an aspirational list, and boom, I mean, you've got all of those every single time. And, you know, you and I both love dogs. And so I have one that I have saved just for puppies. And our, our dog, when I ever share a picture of that, I have one that's already set up and curated, which would we'll, we'll kind of talk about later, you know, where it would fall. But um, um, so, yeah, once in a while I have a good idea. But I tell you, somebody who has a good idea almost every day is our special guest we have right now, who is uh, Jaron from Tailwind. Jaron, we are so excited. He's going to give us the Tailwind tip of the day. Jaron, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, yeah. Welcome Thank you guys to the for show. Having me. Yeah. All right. Um, so my tip of the day for you guys is actually going to be for newer members uh, going over real quick how to uh, set up auto posting for their Instagram accounts. Um, it's a question that we get asked a lot on the CS team. And I think that being able to do that will A, be a great way to get started with all of this. But B, I'm going to mention how many things that actually unlocks for you in your Tailwind account. Um, so the first thing you're going to, going to want to do for this, a little bit of pre-work, is go into your Instagram account itself. You're going to go to the settings tab. Uh, from there, you're going to look for um, where you can change from a personal account to a business account. Um, it's, it'll be settings, account options, and then from there, it'll list a couple different things. You're going to specifically press switch to a professional account and then select business. Um, once you've done this, you're halfway there, just go back to the Tailwind dashboard and uh, there'll be a banner at the top that says set up auto posting. Click that banner, shouldn't take more than a minute or two and you will be completely set up. Now, one of the reasons why you may want to do this is because it immediately access to things like um, you can then set up video posting if that's something that you're interested in. Uh, and there's many other features as well. So I would highly recommend it if you want to be able to auto post as well as enjoy some of these other features. Um, additionally, with the Facebook and Instagram connection to Tailwind, uh, we have had some people reach out recently to us uh, stating that they've received a message stating that there was a disconnect between Tailwind and their Facebook or Instagram. Um, this happens a lot. We understand that it's frustrating and we are sorry, uh, but please know that we are working on it. And we have a fantastic article written by a colleague of mine, uh, Clay, and it details very well uh, the things that you can actually do to address the issue and possibly resolve it. Um, it is a bit of a Band-Aid currently, but it does work. Um, and our development team is working tirelessly with Instagram and their support staff to make sure that we resolve this going forward. So it's not really an issue for you guys anymore. Uh, but in the meantime, we greatly appreciate your patience. Um, I will preface that article that Clay wrote is a little beefy, uh, maybe a 10, 15 minute read. Uh, there is a little video in there. I think it's about seven minutes, but it in-depthly covers all of this. Actually on that, I think Jeff, didn't you recently have to Yeah, in fact, article? I was, I was going to break in and say that, yeah, Clay helped me because I had some issue with my Instagram. And one, there's videos that they have that, that helped me walk through it. I'm like, oh, that's, and I fixed it really easily. Um, but yeah, so, um, and, and if you get stuck, the support staff, you guys are awesome. You help, you know, I mean, he turned it around really quick and I was talking to Clay and he, he got me uh, straightened out and, and the videos are there are real helpful as well. Yes, he is our Instagram guru. And anybody, if you have questions, Instagram related, billing related, anything Tailwind related, please reach out to the CS team. We love to chat with you guys. We're happy to help. We'll answer any questions, give you any tips we can. And we'll point you to the blog sometimes because there are some fantastic articles there. And I highly recommend all of them. Well, Jaron, thank you so much for the Tailwind tip. You were awesome. And we look forward to seeing you on the show later. Thanks, man. Awesome. Thank you guys for having me. See ya. Bye. Awesome. Well, um, yeah, that's, I mean, and they, the support staff there is so cool. Cause I was like, why isn't this working? And they really, they jumped right on it. And Clay was there, uh, messaging me and they even followed up going, Hey, uh, did you get it working? Cause of course I just got it working and didn't tell them. <laughs> so they were, they were really nice. So, 
And I think you're still muted, uh, Rebecca. So um, we have been talking about the, the value ac uh, acronym that we shared at the beginning of the show. So first of all, we were talking about valuable posts for the V. Then we were talking about aspirational posts, the A. See, I can spell. And now we're going to dive right into the L, which stands for lifestyle posts. And Rebecca, I know a lot of this stuff, and we're talk we've been talking a couple weeks ago about how to get to 10K, and we do have this awesome download. If you go to bit.ly forward slash 10K dash FB, you guys can download for that for free. It's amazing. But everybody thinks that all Instagram is is lifestyle posts, but we've hopefully been showing this during the show that it's not. But... What what is the benefit of of having a lifestyle style post for Instagram? Well, and this this is really about building awareness. <clears throat> so at this point, um, you are hopefully interaction. You've got people that are commenting and rep replying, responding to you. Uh, and this is uh, the, the area where you can start to go a little bit deeper in really nurturing those relationships as well, um, and also encouraging action. So I had shared uh, Peg Fitzpatrick as an example of somebody that asks a, a lot of questions. Um, she's also does a lot of that aspirational where she can even uh, kind of merge the two where she's got, hey, you know, here's what I know you're working towards and then uh, going a little bit different, deeper in nurturing that relationship with additional information. So this is where you're going to start to really move your followers into your funnels. So for those those of you that are trying to figure out how do I get, you know, my followers from Instagram to make a move over uh, into my actual content, so to click through that that link in your bio and to possibly go over to your latest course or um, it, it, maybe a download you've created or a video or a webinar, whatever the case might be. This is where you're helping people really understand how you help, who you help, and how specifically you're solving their problems, and then what exactly they're going to be able to find on the other side if they were to take action and click through on that content. So just thinking about the different types of content that this could be with, uh, within your business, um, think about third-party content. This is great um, for uh, just really helping solidify how you've helped people. Uh, so it could be a review, it could be a quote, it could be a testimonial of somebody saying how they've worked with you and what exactly uh, they received from you when you worked together. So just thinking about, you know, who are those people that talk about you all the time that you could spotlight or very, very specific comments that people have made made in terms of uh, how you've helped them solve their problems. It's also great social proof too, right? So it could be uh, that somebody left a comment on uh, a blog post or maybe uh, over on a third party site where they've given you a review. And so reaching out to those people and saying, hey, I would love uh, to highlight this on Instagram. Do you mind you know, if, if I share this? And so mm -hmm. this could look like something as simple as, and you can see this, uh, Jeff, we, we've used this um, within our Instagram as well on our feed is quotes uh, from other people. So maybe, you know, those those third parties, which will really help you, you know, as we always talk about, it's great to talk about ourselves, but even right. better whenever other people do it for us. So um, I know you had an example there yeah, of I, yeah, I was what gonna, this I was, could look like. I hit the button a little too early, but uh, so um, what it is, is this, uh, this customer, this life uh, cycle is uh, an example we're using here. And it says, since I started working with Darren and Emily, I, I can now do things that I never thought were possible. And I feel absolutely amazing. My 44 year old joints don't hurt anymore and I'm flexible and yada, yada, yada. And so um, it, they've taken, like you had said, a testimonial and made it, I mean, it's not that they didn't spend hours creating this graphic. They typed this out on something really simple and posted it up there, and it's doing really, really well uh, for them. And it and it really tells a story. You had mentioned storytelling before, but I just this is a really great way um, of this 
this company showing something from a real follower, follower, a real person, and had a real testimonial. So I think it's a great example of what you were talking about. Yeah, well, and it goes back to thinking about those frequently asked questions, too, because uh, it, it could be a situation where somebody has a question about your product or your service and doesn't quite know how to ask it. And so sharing these can really help those people, too, as they're in that decision making process to better understand, oh, wow, I would love to see those results in my business. I would love to become a better runner um, yeah. or whatever that case might be. And maybe they're just too shy to ask the question or maybe they don't exactly know uh, what they're looking to achieve. So that's another aspect within this life cycle too is meeting people exactly where they're at. So really understanding what are the challenges, what are the struggles that your uh, audience, your followers are dealing with, and how do those relate to your product or your service? So you're thinking about how can I share this type of content? Maybe it is, you know, a quote or that third party testimonial. Um, maybe it's showing a video hands on of how you do something. Um, so I was joking about how I'm trying to learn piano all over again. Uh, so I might follow somebody that's a piano teacher and they might be showing me, you know, where to play my hands and how to do certain chords so it right. can really be that simple of just thinking about okay uh, this is what I teach people this is what I show people how to do what do they need to learn along the way in order to actually get there and find success that's great so yeah so it's really funny you're talking about uh, playing piano because I actually was the same thing I don't know if I took eight years but I just started recently too and it's amazing the people you start following like I'm following piano yes. players on Instagram and I my whole YouTube <laughs> now is full of uh, how to play you know different uh, things I'm trying to learn how to do stride piano and um, just trying you know all these people that I never had access to before so totally yep. totally interesting on how that is so so now we're getting to uh, the you of our uh, ac um, our acronym of value and it's unique posts and I know we all want to be be unique um, but what do you mean by unique posts what, what are we looking at at there yeah, so unique to your business and your brand is what this is all about. This is uh, uh, the exact place that you want to share proprietary ideas, proprietary content. You want to share branded content. So think about surveys or research you're doing or uh, just anything specific to your business that you're going to be able to put your unique spin on, your thoughts, um, your takeaways, maybe your feedback. Um, and really be able to brand your business in the mind of your followers. So I think we have another example here. Yep. Yeah, got it. Awesome. So coming soon, monthly movement subscription. So this is very specific to their company, to their brand, talking about the subscription that they've got coming up and being able to explain exactly what access they're going to get. Um, so athletic engineering, you can see, is really using this entire value framework to showcase multiple different aspects of their business, but also aspects of their personality, their strengths, their skill set. So that's another uh, key piece within this value framework too, is think about not just the type of content, but what are people going to learn? What are they going to take away? How are they going to uh, understand your methodology or maybe your process? And um, I didn't realize it was going to become a show about playing the piano, but Jeff, I'm going to go back to that <laughs> right. because obviously different styles are going to mesh with different personalities. So one person I follow on Instagram, um, I might connect with somebody else may not. Um, so think about that too, within all of this content, as we talk about it, who is that audience that you want to attract? Who is it that you are really speaking with and whatever you want to call it, whether it's your target audience, your persona, um, whoever those people are that you want to attract over on Instagram, how can you use all of these different types of pieces of content to just naturally pull them in 
to your to your marketing funnel to Instagram and really allow them to see oh my gosh wow they've got you know this going on they've got this going on now they've got possibly a subscription that I could become a part of and it feels more like a conversation now mm. that we're having with our audience instead of we're just that pushy spammy you know Instagram right. marketer um, that <laughs> is constantly shouting out all the great stuff about ourselves right but we are gonna shout out about ourselves because we're getting close to the end of the show and there's still time to be entered for the uh, selfie light if you put in a hashtag tailwind tip like so many people have done for example I want to pull up this from Connie Beckford she goes uh, the tailwind hashtag tool is awesome also, keeping the numbers in mind if you're posting in real time and searching new hashtags, that's very, very cool. And then um, we have another one that's, uh, I think it's um, Step, Step Ken, I can't say your name, but it's, it's um, she goes, thank you for the guide. It looks comprehensive. Looking forward to reading it. So um, we are going to pull up that guide really quickly in case you guys haven't grabbed it yet. It's bit.ly forward slash 10k dash FB. That's bit.ly forward slash 10k dash fb we'd love for you to download it it's free and it's great it'll help you get to that 10k that we keep alluding to during the show today so we have we're almost to the end and if this last one is the e luckily it's a short word that i can spell it spell it on live would always be hard for me to do but um the e in value what does that stand for rebecca so E is evergreen and evergreen is something if you're not familiar with the term is something that is it's timely it's relevant and it's useful for years to come so this could be a tip this could be advice this could be learning how to run something that probably isn't going to change a whole lot year after year where uh, however you're helping people get to that place um, maybe there's a tweak here or there within your process or your system that happens but uh, it could have been timely and relevant three years ago and still is today so this is where you're gonna think about really adding in that content that whether it's the right season whether it's the right reason or time within your audience's life um, it it doesn't really expire per se. Um, it's something that they could come back to and use over and over and over again. So going back to the, the running example, you know, maybe you're you're training for a 5K and you're not a huge runner all the time, but you know you saved that super awesome post uh, from Instagram a year ago and you're gonna come back and you're gonna review that as you're ramping up again. Um, I am not a runner, so that could have been a terrible example. <laughs> um, but <laughs> um, but hopefully you get my drift. That right. it's something that yeah, people can come back and they can relate to at any given time. And we do have an example of that. We're going to pull this up. And of course, avocados are always evergreen. I mean, yeah. if it had toast, then it would you know. I don't know if it'd be as evergreen, but it is an avocado and pink lemonade, which is kind of funny because this is. Um, athletic engineering again and they they post a lot of valuable content but they also put in things that are little this this could even count as unique for their brand but it is something that's evergreen right here and i thought that was a, a really funny example that christian gave us well and i i love how you can see and how we just kind of walked through uh every single aspect of this from one company so hopefully that really clarifies and you know whether you're you're watching with us live or you're watching the replay or you're listening to the podcast you can begin to see how all of these pieces really work together that v that a that l u and e and how you can have fun you can uh, really mix it up and you can plug things in like avocado toast because who doesn't love avocado toast? <laughs> I might be biased because <laughs> I could eat avocado on anything. Well, you guys in LA <laughs> take all, our, all the rest of the country's avocados is what usually happens. So um, well, that's right. That's what we do. We're hoarders. That's you're hoarding them all. So let's run through them once again. So people who may have just joined us a little bit late, we had this acronym and I'm going to go ahead and see if I can pull it back up here uh, really quick. Um, I want to, I'll go back to the beginning here. And what we have talked about today is um, value and it's, and value, it stands for valuable, aspirational, 
lifestyle, life cycle, unique, and evergreen. And we've walked through each of those for you guys today. Um, hopefully, you've got some maybe some new ideas from uh, these um, examples that we have given you. And uh, Rebecca has given you a ton of tips. You guys have dropped a ton of tips also um, inside of the group today, the Tailwind tip. It's going to be hard. I have to copy and paste all those for the drawing uh, because we do a randomizer. So there's a lot of them today. We're still going, but um, let's see. Uh, Holly says, love having Tailwind. I can post either Pinterest or Instagram. Also seeing what's most popular posts are. You can keep it all in one place. Um, <laughs> Tailwind has actually said avocados are always relevant, Jeff. And you were correct, uh, Rebecca. Connie says from a runner, yes. Um, Yay, Connie, um, thank you. <laughs> and another Tailwind tip, be your authentic self and share content that is valuable and inspirational to your targeted audience. So um, uh, lots of Tailwind tips. This is probably the perfect one from Bree to sum it up today. She goes, Tailwind tip, show the value of you using the value plan. So thank you, Bree, for grabbing that. That was awesome. Uh, Rebecca, you're incredible as always, but I, I'm going to let you have the last word. And we want to make sure we tell them also about uh, the uh, 10K, the uh, free download we have. Well, Jeff, you make it so much fun this hour with you. It's like, whew, how does that it go does, by so flies. fast? Yeah. I know. So I, I shared just briefly, but just real quick again. Um, and I, I can't I can't remember who said about comprehensive, but uh, yeah, um, Kristen really put our the author of this book over at Tailwind really put her heart and soul into this. And I think not to overwhelm people, it's 72 pages, something like that of absolute gold on how to get to 10,000 followers on Instagram. And so when you download it, not only do you get immediate access, it's free, 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 free to you to download this 10K guide, but we've also just created a support group where you get access to the Tailwind team. So to all of us, um, we're going to be there every single day helping you on your journey to 10K. Uh, we're also, we have a whole lot of Tailwind members, uh, maybe just like you, that are trying to get to 10K. Um, they reached 10K and now they shared within that guide how they did it, all of their strategies, and they're joining us in the group. So you're going to get VIP exclusives within that group that you will not get here on our page, um, access to AMAs. So asking uh, all of these phenomenal Instagrammers uh, questions that you're dying to know the answers to, um, and just a whole lot of content that you won't get anywhere else. So we'd love to see you over there. And once you download, you'll get the link to join us within that group as well. Awesome. I said I'd let you have the last word, but I am going to, because this comment just came in and I thought it was perfect. Deb says, um, Tailwind Tip, listen to Rebecca and Jeff. They know what they're talking about. Seriously, I've been stuck at, at, and 700-ish followers forever. So frustrating. So you both are giving me inspiration to keep moving forward. And that's what we love to hear. Keep moving forward. Keep going. And we will see you guys next week. Uh, we're talking all about Pinterest. Thank you so much for joining us. And we will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Bye-bye.